In this video, we're going to look at Cauchy sequences of real numbers. Um, first, we need a definition. A sequence A of n is a Cauchy sequence if there exists, or if for epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n such that n and m are greater than capital N. We have that the difference between any two terms past this capital N are less than epsilon. And this is going to end up being a pretty powerful uh, property for us. Um, one, one of the reasons, well, I'll come back to that in a second. So theorem one, a Cauchy sequence is bounded. So the proof is, by definition, um, for a given epsilon greater than zero, there exists an n such that m and n are greater than n, we have this property. That's the definition of a Cauchy sequence. But this implies, based upon the uh, absolute value inequality prop, you know, the absolute values, this inequality is true. And then we know this is less than epsilon because it's a Cauchy sequence. Now this is true for any m and n greater than n. Right? So if we replace m by n plus 1, which is greater than n, then this still holds. So let's do that. Put n, a of capital n plus 1 here and add it to this other side, and we get this. Now notice that, th so this is true for all n greater than capital N. So if we let m be the maximum of the absolute value of a1 all the way to absolute value of a capital N, and then plus, and add in this last term here, that means that a, the absolute value of a n is less than or equal to m, and this for all n, every one of them. So therefore, m is bounded, uh, m is a bound for the sequence a n, and, and we're done. Okay? So now this uh, second theorem is what ends up being pretty powerful. A sequence of real numbers converges if and only if it's a Cauchy sequence. So the power of this theorem is that normally to prove something converges, we need to know what it converges to, and then we go through the, our normal way of proving that. But here, if, if we know a convergent sequence is also Cauchy, we don't need to actually know what the sequence converges to. We just need to know that once we get so far down the sequence, if all the terms are so close to one another, you know, it's a Cauchy sequence, then we know it converges. So we don't actually need to know what it converges to. So let's, let's prove this. And since it's an if and only if, we assume this is true and prove this, and then we assume this is true and prove that. So going uh, this direction, let's let A be a convergent sequence to a, say, say A. Then there exists an epsilon over 2 such that uh, there exists in capital N where little n greater than capital N that uh, we have this inequality hold. Now let's let M and N be greater than capital N. Then um, if we look at this difference and then we add zero so we add and subtract the same quantity and then we use the property of absolute value we know this is true but this, because a, it's a convergent sequence and we're past capital N, we know this is less than or equal to epsilon over 2, and this is less than or equal to epsilon over 2, which equals epsilon. So every term is less than epsilon. So it is a Cauchy sequence. Now let's go the other way. So let's assume that it's a Cauchy sequence which means that there's an epsilon over 2 greater than 0. There exists a, say, n1, such that when m and n are greater than n1, this inequality holds. Okay, that's just the definition of a Cauchy sequence. Now, from theorem 1, we know a n is bounded. A Cauchy sequence is bounded. So now, from the uh, bolzano weierstrass theorem, there exists a subsequence of a n, call it a n k, that converges to some point, we're just going to generically call it A. 
So that means there exists an epsilon over 2 greater than 0 such that um, there exists, um, that should be an N2, such that NK is greater than N2, such that this inequality holds. So this is the definition of a limit. And we're using the subsequence, right, because the, based on the volzano wirchow theorem, we know that it, that it converges to some point A. So now let's let capital N be the maximum of N1 and N2. So that means M, N, and N, K are all greater than N. Now since A, N is a Cauchy sequence, we know this is true. Thus, if we look at A, N minus A, and then we add zero, so add and subtract the same quantity, then based upon the absolute value uh, properties, that's less than the sum of these two absolute values. But since it's Cauchy, we know that's less than our epsilon over 2. And since the subsequence converges, we know that that's less than or equal to 2, which that is equal to epsilon. So this series, the sequence, original sequence, converges. And therefore, you know, the series converges, and we're finished. Well, that's all I have for today. Hopefully you enjoyed that. I sure did. Um, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one. Thanks. Bye.